talking about feeder insects and uh, which ones I think are, are pretty easy to come by, pretty easy to breed and cheap, uh, very cost effective to feed, to keep alive. And yeah, we'll just take you guys through the different kinds of breeders and uh, breeder, breeder insects you guys can get in South Africa. Uh, there aren't that many, so video won't be, be 20 minutes long this time, only maybe about 10 minutes. So I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so the first feeders we're talking about today is superworms. Uh, superworms are really cool. They also call them Mario worms or Max worms or wax worms. Uh, so yeah, that's what they look like. Really high in uh, nutrition and calcium. Sorry about that, one of them dropped. Uh, let me put the rest down. So this is what they look like basically. Uh, very easy to breed. These guys, uh, they, they, turn in, they go through a... a evolution stage where they pupate and then they turn into beetles and then from there they start breeding again get more bunch of these little baby guys they get to this size again then you start going the process all over again really nice all our animals love these guys uh, spiders uh, they're not really good for spiders they burrow right down into the substrate so then you kind of uh, your spider doesn't find it until they turn into a beetle one day and pop out there and then they're also not I don't think they're too tasty because these beetles really smell bad um, so not something I think that your animals want to eat. But the lizards love these guys. Um, some of the some of the tarantulas will eat them if if they can catch them. They do love them. But the lizards, the geckos, they all love these guys. I'm sure if you even have some hectic fish, you could try these guys. Uh, but yeah, have an exoskeleton, so they also molt, uh, just like tarantulas do. Anything with the exoskeleton molts out to grow. So these guys will shed their skin and they will molt out, and that's it. So yeah, you also get a smaller type of this called a mealworm. They're about half the size and also half the girth. Um, if you can see, this is quite a large, quite a large worm. So you get a smaller one as well, and they're easier for the smaller animals, obviously. So yeah, that's the, that is the the superworm for you guys. Okay, the next feeder we are doing is something that you would usually see in Fear Factor. Uh, these are called the Hissa Madagascan hissing roaches. So they're really cool. They are called that for a reason. Uh, if you do something to them that is uncomfortable like move them around they will start squealing and then these guy this one is a male because he has horns at the back females do not have that uh, females are, are also a little bit bigger or this one this one is just maybe a small male but yeah still quite large uh, these guys actually make really good pets as well uh, make really good pets if you a cockroach person or a bug person but yeah these guys are also great feeders for all the big spiders Big spiders love these guys, bearded dragons love these guys, they, they will go for them. Any monitors, monitors will smash these guys, they will, um, especially if they're a little bit smaller monitors, um, not these huge two meter long uh, croc monitors you get or anything like that. But yeah, smaller monitors, Aki, stuff like that, they'll love these guys. Uh, not too good for the digestive system, I think, but uh, uh, you also get another one that's pretty similar, about half the size, they're called Dubia roaches. Um, they're also really really cool and the nice thing about them is they can't climb surfaces so you you're pretty good to go these guys can climb so when you have them in a bin and you have them uh, breeding you would put a thick uh, band of, of Vaseline or plutonium jelly around the side so that they can't climb out and uh, then then you should be good to go they also need heat pads they need heat sources because they don't come from here they come from Madagascar so over there they, they breed uh, these guys also they're not like normal roaches they only eat fresh food uh, they won't eat food that's going off uh, their bins have to stay really really dry so that that uh, that it doesn't mold because as soon as you get mold in one of your roach bins then you lose the whole colony you can just as well give up so yeah this is the hissa roaches for you guys lovely little feeder insects um, really good source of protein and uh, I think this is this is one of the the better feeders to have if you have really big lizards like uh, some uh, 
some bigger gecko species and some bigger uh, bearded dragons, stuff like that. So, all right, the next one we're doing, as I said in the previous in the previous clip, uh, we're doing the Turkish Turkish roaches. So these are my favourites. Unfortunately, my stock's running a little low due to the circumstances outside. Um, so yeah, this is what they look like. A bunch of little guys running around there. Uh, there's normally a few of them. I actually want to check if I can get you guys a tray that is full. Unfortunately, I have so many babies, but I don't think that you guys can see that. Okay, maybe we go a little closer. So yeah, these guys are really nice feeders. That little worm you see in there is part of a cleaner crew. So he'll go inside the bin, and whatever these guys don't eat, or if there's any roaches that die out, then they would, uh, then they would clean that up for us. So yeah, really, really nice roaches to to breed. Uh, they breed fairly easily. Uh, if you have a, a decent amount to start off with and then also anything can eat them we do our leopard geckos on them the cresties the the spiders we do the the chameleons do those as well they also smash those and yeah that's that's basically it uh, really really easy to breed also can't climb surfaces and as soon as they get out especially here in the free state is really cold um, gets to about minus 10 degrees celsius uh, so yeah it gets really really chilly um, in winter time and then these will all just die if you don't have any heat supply so yeah we will do a more uh, in-depth breeding video of of uh, all our roach colonies and stuff like that uh, but for now we're just showing you guys the different types of of uh, feeder insects you guys get and then we have one more for you guys and i think then we will be done enjoy all right so our last feeder is crickets so crickets are really really cool uh, very readily av available also pretty easy to breed if you do it right if you do it wrong it's going to be a complete mess up uh, you'll never get any any pinhead crickets so pinheads are really really baby small crickets they are literally the size of a of a of a of a pinhead you know they 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 tiny 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 so these ones are a little bit bigger we can show you guys what they look like if we can uh, so that's basically what they look like just normal gray, uh, gray crickets. I think they're actually called brown soft shell crickets. But yeah, really good feeder, feeder animals, uh, feeder insects. We do them for the bearded dragons, baby bearded dragons, baby spiders. Uh, Cresties love crickets. They they go over the top for them. And uh, so yeah, that's basically our video for you guys on uh, the crickets. If you want to start breeding crickets, we're going to do a video on those as well. As we also need to start breeding crickets for ourselves. Uh, it's getting a little pricey to order from other people. So yeah, everything, if you guys ever want to start a, a roach bin, throw us a, a, a comment down and let us know if you guys would like to see more about that as well. And then anything you guys want to see, please drop us a like or a, a subscribe and a, and, a, and, a, and a like and ring the bell if you want to see more of our videos. But also give us some ideas if you guys would like and then uh, that'll help us a lot. Also know what you guys are interested in. I uh, hope you guys enjoy your day. Cheers.